This is Darren here with Creativity Unleashed, and in this video, we are going to be asking the question, is my compressed air dry enough? Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about refrigerant air dryers. Do I need one, and will that solve my problem, and how do they work? Well, a refrigerant air dryer works on the same principle as this lovely cold drink with ice in it on a hot summer day. As you can see, the condensation from the ice forms on the outside of the glass because it's cold inside because of the ice. And in simple terms, that's what a refrigerant air dryer does, but for your compressed air. And it separates out the condensation, so then you have nice, clean, dry air. And you can enjoy this lovely drink and think about that. Mm. So in a lot of applications, it may not be necessary to have clean, dry air. If you're just shooting in some nails with your nail gun, filling a tire, or things like of that nature, blowing out your garage, it might not be extremely important to have clean, dry air. But if you are doing some of the more critical applications, such as spray painting, um, sandblasting, or plasma cutting, which I do a lot of, you'll very quickly realize that you need to tackle the moisture issues. I'm here in the tropics and the humidity is high and the temperature is really high, which means that once the compressor gets pretty hot and the tank gets hot, um, it holds on to a lot of moisture. I just wanted to show you guys my air compressor room finished up and finally got the frequency drive all programmed right and the pressure switches and check valves and all of the things required and so I'll just go over that real quick with you so that you have a better understanding if you're repairing, working on, or making your own air compressor like I did here. Um, so I'll just go over all of this real quick and hopefully the information will be helpful for you if you're doing something similar. Alright, to start off, of course, made in the uh, previous videos, the uh, um, big tank here. I got my line coming out, going into um, this here, which is all 304 stainless. It wasn't going to be a whole lot different in cost. Here's uh, the bypass to the refrigerant air dryer, and you can either have that open or close, and then the actual going into the refrigerant air dryer and coming out. I'm later going to run plumbing through everything and put a regulator in different locations. Um, but as of now, I just have it like that. Um, over here, this comes off of the compressor. You can see there, and um, comes up and around. A lot of times they do them in a tighter loop, but it wasn't convenient to bend it with what I had. Um, so we just did it that way. So then it comes into a check valve, and these check valves also have the little connection for the air line to go off to bleed the pressure off of the check valve, and that comes over and goes into the um, pressure switch, which has um, a few adjustments to set the start point and the off point, um, and then that sends a signal um, to the variable frequency drive here. This one is good up to a 10 horsepower motor, but they often recommend on cheaper ones to double the capacity of your frequency drive to the motor, especially on loads where you have to start with a lot of load like an air compressor can. Um, so I have that all programmed and I'm running a three phase, of course, since I'm using a frequency drive, five horsepower, a motor, this motor has been rewound and all, but I got it for about $100, so I'm not gonna complain. Anyway, from a friend. So, I will turn it on, let you guys see what it looks like starting up. I have a like a second and a half ramp up time, so that it doesn't jolt the bearings and stuff as much. <laughs> Variable frequency drives have a huge advantage. They can consume less electricity, maintain a better power factor. They don't have that harsh draw when they start up, so you don't have your lights dimming and things like that. They work better when you're running off-grid on inverters or generators. And they can, of course, save you power. And it makes it where you can vary the speed of the motor and change the direction that the motor is running. There's a whole lot of advantages. 
So here's the air filtration system I had shown you guys in another video. And I just want to show you guys how well the refrigerant air drying system works. I was running the system the other day doing plasma cutting out on a job site with just the, just this and an air compressor and I had all the desiccant pretty saturated and the air is so dry in the refrigerant air dryer that just running the air through the system actually has dried the desiccant out. So there you go, you can see how dry the air actually is. It dried out desiccant that was pink and now it's blue again just from running air through it spray painting. So I would have to say that I am incredibly impressed with the refrigerant air dryer. It has solved all the moisture issues in the compressed air and it has done an incredibly good job. Um, obviously this one's rated for like up to 40 CFM of air. Um, I have not conducted the test to see like what the exact amount of humidity that might be still remaining in the air, um, but it seems completely dry, um, good enough for most any application that I know of. Um, I'm sure there is more testing that could be conducted and I may do that in another video if there is interest. I hope you guys have a great one and found this video helpful and that the information here was um, useful to you. Alright, so if you're anyone like me, you want to know how this works. So we have the air coming in here through the line and it actually goes into the radiator here where it um, gets rid of the initial heat and then it comes back up and goes into the insulated system here where it um, combines next to the refrigerant so the heat gets pulled away by the refrigerant and we'll go over to the other side here and show you what it looks like. So of course here we have a compressor that you'd see in like most refrigerators and of course the fan and here it looks like we have like a thermostat and then of course once the cold air comes back out it goes into the separating system where the water gets separated out and it has an auto drain that's the orange hose there that allows the water to get drained out after I believe the pressure is taken off it'll drain the water out. So um, yeah the system works really well, highly recommend it and been extremely impressed.